Hi, I'm Brandon Lee. I'm an independent filmmaker for social media. Most of my work is related to travel and culture. My short films have been featured by BBC, the Travel Video Awards, and Vimeo Staff Picks. And I also do tutorial and educational videos about filmmaking on YouTube, as well as in my online film school, Unscripted Studio. The thing I enjoy most about being a filmmaker is that it gives me a reason to explore new places and dive into other cultures. I've met eagle hunters in Mongolia, e-gamers in Korea, Catholic brotherhoods in Spain, and whirling dervishes in Turkey. And posting my work on social media gives me an instant way to share my videos with people who appreciate my work. I get instant feedback from people all around the world. I first started traveling because I was working as a freelance camera guy and shooting in a lot of different locations, mostly in the USA. I started traveling internationally when I got hired to direct a series of airline videos in the UAE. I got addicted to the nomadic lifestyle and I gave up my American apartment and started living in hotels and Airbnbs, which actually I'm still doing. It's not a lifestyle for everybody, but it has allowed me to spend longer periods of time in the places where I'm filming. So instead of making superficial tourism videos, I get to dive deeper and show things that most tourists would never get to see. Traveling and being a nomad has definitely changed my perspective on the world. I realized that home can be almost anywhere as long as I have a reason to be there and I have good people to be there with. I've spent several months at a time living in Hong Kong, Thailand, Spain, New Zealand, Canada, Croatia, and Indonesia, and any of those places could have been my home because they're all great in different ways. El paro carpintero. El paro carpintero. I also learned that there's really no perfect place to live. Every time I travel to a new location, I end up missing something about the place I just left. After traveling to over 50 countries, I can say there's no one place that has the best people, the best food, or the best lifestyle. It's a lot more complex than that, but it means that I always have a reason to get out there and explore someplace new. My style of filmmaking is a mix of documentary and experimental techniques where the camera is always moving and taking the viewer somewhere that they didn't expect. My goal is to make videos that are emotionally engaging and visually beautiful while also giving us a sense of what life is like for different people around the world. My signature style in cinematography is using wide lenses and moving the camera fluidly through a scene to catch all the little details in sort of a freestyle kind of way, almost like an FPV drone. I want the audience to feel like they're living inside the world I'm filming, not just standing back and observing like a tourist. So that's why I choose to push in really close to my subjects. I think a quality video is one that makes the audience feel like their time was well spent. If they watch a video and afterward it was enjoyable and it brought value to them, either emotional value or informational value or both, then it's a quality video. It really doesn't need to be any more complicated than that if you ask me. My main advice for people who want to make YouTube videos is to create a type of video that you're excited about doing several times a month or even every day. Making videos is a lot of work, no matter what kind they are. So if you want to have a YouTube channel, make sure you're making a type of video that you can upload consistently and with similar levels of quality. When I'm making one of my videos, most of my time is spent in the editing phase. I think anyone who's new to videography will be a bit surprised at just how long it takes to edit even a simple video. That's because if you shoot one hour footage, then it takes another hour just to watch it again. Then you need to pick out the best parts, trim off the bad parts, add titles, music, sound effects, and then render it. And if you're posting to social media, there's a whole other layer of stuff you have to do. Meta tags, descriptions, thumbnails. So it all adds up to a whole lot of time to create each video that you post.
I think it's really helpful to have a team as a filmmaker, whether it's a film crew or if you're working with just a supportive group of friends, that's fine too. But I don't think it's necessary to always have a team. Personally, I actually prefer going out and shooting alone a lot of the time because it's just less complicated and it's less stressful. And when I'm filming documentary subjects, they're less intimidated when I don't have a big crew with me and tons of gear. Most of my travel videos have been made with minimal crew and minimal gear. It just makes it a whole lot easier to improvise. But when I want to go bigger with my ideas and try something more logistically complicated, it's really helpful to have a team. I travel a lot for my shoots and I do try to pack as light as possible, but I'm always still bringing usually the maximum amount of weight that the airline will allow. So I'm going to tell you here about a few pieces of gear that are essential for me that I have to bring on every trip. First, my camera. I use currently the Sony a7S III. I've been using Sony mirrorless cameras for quite a while because of their small size and their big sensors. So I get a big look from a very portable camera. I have a lot of lenses that I use, but one of my favorites is the Samyang 18mm f2.8 because it's full frame, it's wide angle, and it's super lightweight. It's really easy to use this lens when I'm shooting on a gimbal or handheld because it doesn't weigh me down and I can go all day much easier. Another really important piece of gear is my gimbal, which is a type of camera stabilizer. I currently have two gimbals. My main gimbal is the DJI RS2 because it works with any lens in my kit and it's very powerful. I also have the Jiyun Crane M3, which is a tiny gimbal that only works with my lighter weight lenses. I use the M3 on days when I don't want to carry as much gear or I want to do some camera moves in really tight spaces where the RS2 wouldn't fit. Otherwise, I use the RS2 for my main shooting. I frequently do use smartphones also for my video shooting, especially when I'm shooting for Instagram. I think the video capabilities of phones are getting really good, and if you shoot carefully, you can get shots that look just like they were done with a full-size camera and even a stabilizer. The best thing about shooting on a smartphone is that it's always with me, so I can shoot anytime, no matter where I go or what I'm doing. So this makes them a perfect fit for social media because I need to be grabbing shots all the time to post on social. I don't always want to be bringing around my full frame camera and my gimbal and all the accessories, so now I can just use the smartphone in my pocket and get stabilized shots in 4K or even 8K and then upload them right away to my accounts. Shooting on smartphones is perfect for people who travel a lot and can't carry a whole lot of extra gear or who just want to shoot in a more convenient way without the hassle of using a mirrorless camera or a cinema camera. The biggest problem that most people will encounter when making travel videos is that the videos are just not that interesting. They're just kind of boring to watch after the first minute or so. This is because there's no real story to tell on most people's trips. When we go on vacation, we're intentionally trying to escape the challenges of our regular lives. We're usually not exploring uncharted territories or taking on extreme physical challenges. So while that makes for a really great relaxing vacation, it becomes a boring video. So my solution here is to just find some kind of storyline that will make your travel video interesting to other people when they're watching. Whether you're vlogging or shooting a documentary or even making a narrative, the big question is always the same. Why should anybody else outside of myself and my friends want to watch this video? What will the audience get out of it? There's many ways to answer this question and it really all just depends on what kind of videos you wanna make and what you think will be the most interesting to your intended audience. You could add some informational content, tell people about the place, tell people how much does the food cost, how much does it cost to get there, what are the interesting sites to see. Or if you're a funny person, you could just make people laugh as they follow you through your journey. You could also just shoot really beautiful footage and make a relaxing video for people to play in the background as they do other stuff. Or you could dive in and create a full narrative storyline with adventure and suspense. Any of these could be good videos or any of these could be really bad videos. It really just depends on your skill as a filmmaker. The first thing I think you should learn if you're just getting started as a filmmaker is the basics of how to operate your camera and how to use an editing program. If you don't know these two things, you're never gonna finish a video, unless of course you hire other people to do all that stuff for you but I'm assuming that we're doing it all ourselves when we first start out. So no matter what gear you use, you really need to learn how to use it. 
practice it all the time until it becomes automatic knowledge like playing an instrument or kicking a football. Once you've mastered the basics of how to use your gear, you can then more easily focus on the higher level creative stuff. If you want to make your smartphone videos look more cinematic, then you should really study how traditional filmmakers use the camera. For instance, here's an obvious one. Movies aren't shot vertically, they're shot horizontally. So cinematic smartphone videos shouldn't be shot vertically either. Also, movies don't use auto exposure. Auto exposure is when the phone automatically makes the image brighter or darker as you shoot. I almost always lock off my exposure before I start recording so that the brightness of the image stays consistent throughout the shot. Another tip here is to keep the horizon level. Most phones will either have a horizon level indicator or a grid that you can overlay on the image. You can use these tools to make sure that your shot isn't tilted. Vivo phones also have a feature that automatically levels the shot while you're shooting, even if you're not holding the phone perfectly horizontal. So you could try that too. My final little tip here is to avoid shooting in flat light. Flat light is when there's no texture to your subject because either the light is too soft or the light source is coming from the same angle as the camera is positioned. So to make sure your shots look more 3D, you should try to have the light hitting your subject at an angle that brings out the texture. And to figure out more about how to do that, just study some good photographs or some shots from movies and learn where the light sources are coming from. Then you can apply that to your own shots. My main sources of inspiration as a filmmaker have always been meeting new people, traveling and experiencing different cultures, things like that. So I'll admit that throughout this pandemic, it's been a real struggle to stay inspired. What kept me going when my options were limited was to explore new skills that I hadn't worked on before. So for instance, when I was in pandemic lockdown, I taught myself how to do interior lighting for films. I used myself as a subject and I just moved lights around for hours and hours. This is a skill that otherwise I probably wouldn't have learned because I usually shoot in natural light when I travel. So while I would not want to go back into lockdown, it was actually a lot of fun to have a reason to learn a different aspect of filmmaking. So for anybody who's felt really restricted by the pandemic or is still feeling that way, my advice is to find some kind of new skill that you can work on in your current situation. Maybe it's digital graphics or animation, or maybe you can start making your own music for your videos. Or if you have no other option, you can always sit down and start writing a screenplay. The pandemic can keep us from traveling, but it can't stop us from using our imaginations. All right, thanks so much for watching, and I hope you found this talk fun and informative.